So last week we started the series on this 70 year old GMC 302 N Line 6. 50 years ago it was pulled out of a fire truck and we still don't know why. All we know is it didn't run. So today we're going to continue the teardown and we're going to find out exactly why they pulled this thing out. So stay tuned. Well, I did discover one problem. Uh, I was taking off the crank pulley, and this is the hub that the crank pulley attaches to. Uh, it, it's obvious that there was a previous repair at some point done. Uh, I haven't inspected the crank yet. We're going to be pulling it out shortly, and we'll have a, a better idea of what we're faced with then. But uh, I still don't see this as a reason to uh, take this engine completely out of service. But it appears what had happened, that at some point this hub, the keyway that's in the hub, uh, had, had stretched open. So there was quite a bit of play in this, in, in this hub. and and of course in the in the lower belt pulley but what it appears that someone had done at some point they drilled a hole through this hub through the end of the crank and put a pin in it to try to stabilize it and keep it from uh, rocking around I'm, I'm not real sure why they did that uh, the damage on the inside of this is pretty bad but uh, the solution would have been just to put another hub on it so uh, as we get further let's hope the crank uh, the nose of the crank is not damaged so let's keep going Okay, we're going to go ahead and pull out the, the tappets. Of course, these are solid lift and non-roller flat tappets. Uh, it's important, uh, one thing about these, these old tappets like this, as long as the, the, the surface is good and the lifter to, uh, or tappet to bore clearance is great, then there's no need to put in new tappets. But it is very important when you're doing a teardown, you want to make sure that when you remove it, you mark exactly which hole that it came out of. We're going to keep these for the build because they look great. I see no reason at all to replace these, at least the first one. So let's keep going. Yeah, every one of the tappets look fantastic. So we're definitely going to keep those. The bores look great. So we know that's not well, that's one issue we're not going to have to deal with. So uh, let's pop the cam cover off and dive a little deeper. We're going to stop for a minute and clean up a mess. So we've got the camshaft pulled. Uh, the lobes look great. Don't see any irregular wear on them. Uh, the, the, the top of the lobes, uh, they look good. Don't see anything crazy. The cam bearings look pretty good too. Uh, so let's keep going.
So we've torn the entire engine down. And so far, I cannot find a reason why it didn't run. Remember, that's the big question. Why didn't it run? The main bearings look great. Rod bearings look great. And the clues along the way, we look at the tappets, we look at the tappet bores, we look at main bearing, rod bearing journals on the crank. Obviously, the oiling system was working fantastic. There's virtually no wear inside this engine. It's exactly what I would expect to see uh, something built like this back in the day with about 25,000 miles on it. So uh, the only thing we haven't checked yet is this head. And if you remember from the first video, my theory was that we had one or two burnt valves in this head. My prediction is that the only thing wrong with this engine is a burnt exhaust valve. And uh, we haven't torn the head down yet, but we're going to find out here in just a second. If you notice, guys, it's, um, it's amazing to me still how well these things were built back in the day. Uh, even the oil pump having safety wire on all of the fasteners to ensure they didn't come out. It's, it's an incredible thing. You don't see that type of stuff anymore, that type of care and thoroughness during the manufacturing process with high volume stuff like car engines. So anyway, uh, let's see what we find in the cylinder head. We have to remember that these were very low compression engines. And if you have if you have a slight leak on a valve, this engine in particular being only 7 to 1 compression ratio. So with that low of a compression, if you have the slightest loss in cylinder pressure, the engine won't run. Let's see what we have. Look at that. Oh, we have one here and we have one here. Amazing. Cylinder two, cylinder three, but primarily that exhaust valve, that pesky exhaust valve on cylinder number six. So with three valves, not seating properly, that's enough of compression loss to keep an engine from running. So uh, my theory, looks like it came true. Anyway guys, I want to thank you very much for watching and following along with this rebuild. Uh, what we're going to do in the next rebuild is tear down the cylinder head, see what we would have to do uh, to repair that. More than likely, I will go ahead and install new valve seats, hardened seats uh, all throughout the head so we don't have to put lead additive in the fuel and uh, check the springs. And then we're also going to go through uh, the main journals and uh, the rod journals. We're going to measure all of those. They were in such great condition that uh, we may just keep them the way that they are. Now the only other problem we still have to address is this hub. Now, and, and you saw in the video there where they had, uh, someone had made this modification as an attempt uh, to repair this, which I'm not sure why they did it that way. Uh, it would have been relatively simple just to uh, either have another hub machined uh, or uh, and, and with a slightly smaller OD uh, for the, or excuse me, ID for the crank. Uh, so more than likely we'll be able to make a sleeve for the nose of the crank and then I will make uh, another hub and I believe that'll take care of that problem. And I think we'll be able to use that crank just the way it is. So we've solved the big question, guys. Now we get to go ahead and move forward with rebuilding this engine. Thanks again for watching. Take care of yourselves and each other. Y'all have a great day.